Today, we're going to explain that gap in your programming resume. Hey, before we get started, like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. It all helps with the YouTube algorithm. So let's say you have a gap in your resume and it's more than three months long. Now, this isn't as big of a deal as people think. A lot of people have a resume break when they decide to have kids, and I'm not going to hold that against you. But the other kind of gap happens when someone loses a job, and because they're over-specialized or unqualified or just get discouraged, they just can't find a new one. And you see this a lot with new graduates, too, where they have a computer science degree, but they didn't really do any projects or didn't have any internships that could help land themselves a job. Most of the time, you should just tell the truth about a gap in your resume, especially if it involves a major change in your life situation. Now, I've dealt with this personally. I actually have four gaps in my resume, and all of them were deployments when I was with the Army National Guard when America was fighting wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. So typically, when someone asked me, I answered like this. I was in Iraq acting as America's throbbing biceps of justice! Okay, so maybe I don't answer them exactly like that, but... The whole point here is that there are valid reasons why you might have a gap in your resume. Some others might include, well, I take an FMLA for the birth of my first child, and I had enough money saved up that I could basically do a whole year on my savings. And I, I decided to stay home and, and be with my child for the first year, and it was very rewarding. Or, well, my father was at the, the end of his life, and he needed a caregiver. And, uh, you know, I, I spent the last year of his life caring for him and uh, tending to his needs until he passed away. And uh, I thought that was that was very rewarding for me to be there for him uh, when he's always been there for me. Or, hey, you know, one of my buddies was in Vegas. He was getting married and the forecast there called for snow, if you know what I mean. So I headed out there for a little ski trip. Uh, I was driving a car, got pulled over. There were some drugs in the car. Ended up doing 30 days in jail, $10,000 fine lost my job. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing. I, I learned my lesson from that. I don't even use a ray list anymore. I've gone completely clean. And um, I, I consider that a learning experience in my life. Now, when it comes to verifying employment history, most employers will only give out your dates of employment and your title. And that's it. So the only person who can admit that they were fired because they were in jail is you. But any kind of legal conviction is going to show up on a criminal background check, so it's best just to admit that to an employer face-to-face, -face, show contrition, and show that you've learned something. But what if you're one of those guys who lost a job and your gap just kind of grew? And maybe you had a string of bad luck interviewing. Maybe you got depressed and just stopped looking. Well, this answer... And during that time, I just couldn't find anything, so I was just living off unemployment. I beat Cyberpunk 2077, though. Yeah, uh, is not the right answer. Don't say that. And you might be tempted to say, oh, yeah, with COVID, yeah, I just couldn't, couldn't find anything, you know? Now, I might believe this if you were super specialized, like you were a SharePoint developer or a ServiceNow developer or knew some kind of IBM mainframe language. But if you're a C Sharp or Java developer and could do CRUD operations and SQL, I don't know if I'm going to buy that story. So how should you answer this question about a resume gap? Well, I like to use the acronym TPI. This stands for Trading, Entrepreneurship, Passion Project, Illness, and Education. Now, the whole point of this is not to lie. The point is to get close enough to the truth of your situation that you can explain a gap in your resume. So T stands for trading, as in trading stocks, or maybe you were trading collectibles or shoes on eBay. I spent that six-month gap day trading. Um, you know, I've been investing ever since I was in college and, uh, you know, I decided I was going to try to go into business for myself, just strictly day trading. And I, I did OK. I made enough money to cover rent and food. Um, but every day was like walking a tightrope. So I decided to go back to work. So this is totally reasonable and understandable, especially during the Robin Hood craze. And especially if you know a little bit about stocks and can talk about it. E stands for entrepreneurship, as in you're helping a friend start a business or maybe you started your own business. Well, ever since my brother and I were kids, uh, we had always talked about opening up a skateboard shop. And uh, my brother had the money, but he just didn't have anyone to work the store for him. So uh, I decided to take off. I took off for uh, six months. And I did the whole build out of the store, ordered all the inventory. I set up the initial hiring to the point of sale system. And uh, now that, you know, once we were at the point where we had business and we, we could find someone to manage the store for us, uh, I went back to work and he took over the store. Uh, I still work there weekends, um, but one of the things I discovered is that 
I uh, I like skateboarding, uh, but I love programming. And that's why I went back to writing software. Now, this shows that you have skills that may go beyond programming. Now, one thing, if you did freelancing, feel free to mention freelancing. But if you didn't do freelancing, don't lie about it because someone's going to ask you for a portfolio of work. Now, P stands for passion project. This should be one of those projects that you need a time to take off of work in order to complete. Could be building a house or hiking the Appalachian Trail. One warning, if you had a political passion project, like you were trying to help someone get elected, I don't know if I would mention that during an interview. Um, that's one of those things where 50% of the people you talk to might be on the opposite side of the political spectrum. So you might want to leave that out. Instead, say something like this. My dad had a 78 Barracuda and he had just retired. And uh, I spent uh, those nine months uh, working with him uh, in the garage, uh, fixing up that 78 Barracuda. And um, I have some really great memories of that time with my dad. Or I spent that time training for an Ironman triathlon. Uh, I got let go and uh, I had a little bit of money saved up. And I, I realized like if, if there was any time to do a full Ironman triathlon, that's 140 miles, uh, now is the time to do it. Uh, so I got to work training and I ended up doing uh, Ironman in Kona. Um, and it, it was it was probably the highlight of my life. Or maybe, well, let's see, uh, I had been laid off in March of that year. I was right before the start of baseball season. I had a little bit of money saved up and um, I decided that this was a once in a lifetime experience. I was going to try to go to a major league baseball game at every single bar ballpark in the U.S. Um, so I've been to 17 states that have ballparks in them. I've been to all 30 uh, ballparks. I've been to multiple games. And I've actually visited every single state except for Alaska and Hawaii, uh, you know, on my, on my road trip to go to all these ballparks. It was, a, it was a once in a lifetime experience. So this shows that you had a passion about something and that you took time off of work to follow it. It might even lead to more interesting stories that you and your recruiter could talk about. Now, the I stands for illness. This is a pretty easy one. I had a family member fall ill, and I was a primary caregiver. Uh, eventually, we found a full-time caregiver, and I was able to go back to work. It's a simple explanation that a lot of people understand, because who hasn't had to take care of an injured or ill family member? And most people won't press for specifics on the illness or injury. The last E is for education. Well, my previous company was mostly uh, VB6 on WinForms. And uh, so when I got let go, I, I had a little bit of a severance and I decided to use that time going to a C Sharp and Azure boot camp so I could get into the Azure and cloud space. Or maybe that break was uh, when I got my master's degree. I just, I couldn't go to school and work at the same time. So I just decided to concentrate everything on finishing my master's. Now, one more thing. A lot of these reasons come attached with the fact that you had a little bit of money saved up and you do have some money saved up, right? Right? If you haven't already done so, please take a look at my video on seven financial moves for new developers. It has a lot of information that I wish I had when I just started out programming and it'll be available at the end of this video. So the TPI method gives you five reasonable and understandable explanations as to why you had a gap in your resume. Find one of those methods that fits similar to your situation, practice it a couple of times in the mirror on a webcam, and good luck on your next interview. So there I was, pinned down, down to my last round of ammunition, up to my knees in hand grenade pins, and my bayonet was bent. And I said to myself, self, you're in a world of hurt. And so I reached into my left, as you were, I reached into my right cargo pocket and I pulled out an MRE bomb that I had made with an MRE heater and a Gatorade bottle. The moral to that story is never give up. Never, ever give up. Thank you.